Hello everyone and welcome back to the GT Sport Driving School. We're on episode number four and obviously we've done three episodes and had a bit of a break over Christmas but we're back with weight transfers. So if we think about the first three episodes, first of all we had accelerating, braking and cornering. All three have the aspect of weight transferring. So whether you're accelerating and the weight goes to the rear, if you're braking and the weight is going forward, or if you're taking a corner and the weight, so if you go if you're one way, it goes the weight goes the other, or if you turn that way, the weight goes that way. You know, weight has an impact. The, the way the weight moves around the car has a significant impact, especially in GT Sport. It seems a little bit exaggerated in GT Sport, if I'm to say anything, but even so, it's still there and we still have to learn it. So that's why I'm doing a whole episode on weight transfer. Now, sorry, I had a bit of a niche there. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at several examples. So obviously, we have FR cars where potentially they're a little bit less tricky to drive. Um, however, they can have issues accelerating. The engine's in the front, that's where most of the weight is. When they go to accelerate, the weight tries to move backwards. It can only go so far, of course, due to centre of gravity and where the weight is placed and suspension and everything else. But when they accelerate, there's not much weight going over the rear, which is why they're slippy. Think about the Aston Martin. Think about any of the FR Group 3 cars. They get very slippy on exit. When you think about the MR cars, when you come on the braking, initially, they get, can get quite twitchy, especially going around corners as well. The weight wants to move. And because the weight is more in the centre of the car, it literally allows the car to rotate that little bit more. So I'll just come over here so you can see it. It allows the car to rotate a bit more, which is why they can get a bit sketchy is the best word sketchy but when you accelerate because it's mr the weight is more behind you accelerate plants the weight on the rears obviously that squashes the tire down gives more grip on the tires and it allows them to accelerate out the corner that's why mr cars could be better of course then we've got front wheel drive cars similar sort of state as the fr cars weight on the front um, helps a little bit more with braking and of course when trail braking as well as you trail brake getting that weight on the front allows the tires to stick more to the road a little bit more tire allows you to hopefully get that little bit more grip and actually get through the corner now we're going to look at a few examples of this obviously it's not going to be as long as cornering because cornering we really focus on a lot of corners there but we're going to look at some examples because we can look at examples even in the n100 category all the way up to group three group two group one and we can definitely see weight transfer happening now, N100 is actually the best example out of all of them. I mean, we've recently had the E-Type, we're racing the E-Type. Again, weight transfer was significant. There's a lot of body roll in there, a lot of flex in that car. So the weight is moving about. Now, suspension doesn't solely control weight transfer, but it's generally... If you have more body roll, the weight can move around. You've got rolling like this. I'm going to make you all dizzy now or get seasick. And what can happen is the car can get oversteery quite easily. You know, when you when you, the car gets loaded on one side, and we talked about the load of weight in cars before. We even looked at it in the uh, World Tour at Austria, the incident between Zocchi and Alex Oni. Um, weight, it, it can have a significant impact. So even braking in the E-Type, the E-Type was very sketchy to race anyway because it was very oversteery and you had to control that with your inputs, you know, rolling off the brakes, going onto the accelerator, trying to control it as best as you can. Just going 100 to 0 on the brakes just spent the whole rear of the car because it's going all the way to the front. Oh, it's all coming off again. Whoa, where am I going? Whoa. So it's got significant impact. So we're going to look at that. We're going to look at braking, accelerating, turning and look at how weight is affecting the car and then how we control it. So yeah, let's get on with that first example. So here we are in the Jaguar E-Type, what we raced earlier on in the week in the FIA. Now what I wanted to demonstrate first of all was the Scandinavian flick. It's a driving skill or technique if you don't know it, uh, used in rallying, drifting as well, and it's a, a skill and technique to manipulate the weight in the car to get round a corner quicker or to potentially get into a drift. So here you are, you can see it happening now, we're going left to right, uh, we're obviously going to the extreme here, and you can see how the weight has moved more and more as we go between each left and right, to such an extreme, the car then spins. The whole other weight's gone to one side, the other side of the car is so light, uh, that when the weight then transitions to the other side, it's too extreme, the car can't handle itself, and we spin. And just to demonstrate that again in slow motion, here we are. So watch as I just, the first layer, we go left. No, nothing much happening in the car. Go right. Again, the car's not rolling that much, you can see that. But as we start to get to more extremes, notice how it rolls more and more now. You can see the whole of the body rolling. That's weight moving in the car. And then as we try and catch that one, we try and catch it. 
Oh no, too late, we spun. And the reason I've demonstrated this is that's the extreme measure, right? You lose the cart, you spin. Um, obviously it affects tire wear as well, but we'll look at that in a different episode. So how can you stop spinning? This is what I want to demonstrate. Now, first of all, we're gonna look at braking because braking, of course, the whole of the front is gonna get loaded. Front tires then are gonna have more of the weight of the car. The rear is gonna get extremely light. Now, as you go into a braking zone and you brake in a straight line, that's no problem. The, the rear is gonna stay as it is. Now, if you're in different types of cars, potentially the, the rear becomes too light and wants to oversteer. Nothing is holding that rear down, there's no force on it. If you think of downforce, if the rear is pressed down, it stays grippy, if it gets really light, think of a BMX as well, bunny hopping, the rear comes up, there's not much tire contact with the road, you're gonna spin the car. As you may have seen on that first corner there, um, we broke in a straight line, no real issue. We're gonna come down here now, we are gonna turn and you're gonna see that little bit of weight transfer, nothing major, a bit like the start of the Scandinavian flick there. And then into here, brake, nose goes down. Absolutely no problem, fine and dandy. So we're gonna accelerate out of this corner and we're gonna to head to a good example now where the car oversteers while trail braking. Uh, because we, as we just finished trail braking, we chuck the car in a little bit more and the weight shifts drastically. So here we go, brake, brake, trail brake, let go and look, as the weight shifted then, as we came off the brake, suddenly from 50 to 0, the weight shifted back to the rear. And because that momentum happened, the rear lost grip, lo it, it, it lost the rear end, and the car started to oversteer. Now, we could catch that absolutely fine. Obviously, we do, do not want that to happen at all, really. So, the whole idea here is, how can we stop that? How can we stop the rear coming out under braking? Now, it obviously depends on the car. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into the second lap now. You're going to see me trail brake a little bit more into this first corner because I broke in a straight line. I didn't lose any of the rear. Again, coming in, absolutely no problem. I'm managing that weight a little bit more as I manage the brake. Smooth off, smooth on with the brake. Um, and that way, the weight transitions a little bit easier. It's less drastic. Remember, start Scandinavian flick, absolutely fine. The weight transition isn't drastic. If you go 100% to zero, you're going to have issues, which is why we trail brake a little bit. But of course, there you see a little bit more trail braking. But as we went into this corner, we had issues with trail braking coming off and turning at the same time. So if we go a little bit smoother now with the braking as we turn in, uh, if you watch that here, there we go, a little bit smoother, not as much of a turn in, and look, the rear didn't oversteer. So we reduced that weight transfer by a trail braking that little bit longer, a smoother transition with the turn. We didn't have then the drastic transition of the weight going from the front front left to the right rear uh, and having that oversteer moment. And we're going to look at a spreadsheet now just to demonstrate that in numbers. So here we have the front left tyre. We've got the rear left tyre, front right and rear right. And we're going to say each quarter of the car has the weight shifting 25% each across the car. It's basically a 50-50 weight distribution. Now that doesn't happen all the time, of course. Different cars have different weight distributions. But in this example, that is what we're going to use. Now imagine a car brakes in a straight line. So imagine that it's braking like this as it goes towards the corner. It's braking in a straight line. What will happen is the weight will then start to shift forward as much as it can. Imagine you in the car as well, you shift forward. You you try the foot braking in real life, you're going to head towards the window screen because you've never done it before in real life. You suddenly plant your foot and the car breaks 100%. But what will happen is uh, whoops, uh, something like that. As, as I say, this number could be anything. It depends on the car and what's happening in that situation, how much you brake, etc. But imagine the weight has moved. The weight has moved forward now. So more of weight of the car has moved forward. It's more towards the front left and front right tyre. That's doing more work with the weight than the rears. The rears got a little bit lighter. The car is now lifting the rear up a little bit and therefore there's less grip, uh, less tyre contact with the road essentially. Imagine downforce again, as I said earlier, downforce pushes the car down, pushes the tyre into the road, potentially that gives uh, more tyre to road surface. So then imagine uh, you start trail braking. So as you release the brakes, so rather than, you know, you're forcing the car into the ground, uh, potentially this number reduced. So if we go to 30, 30, 20, 20, again, there's a little bit more contact with the road with the tyre because the there's a bit more weight over the rear now uh, than the front. So the the rear is less twitchy, okay? Which is fine again, which is why potentially as you just like slowly go onto the brakes, you risk less issues with the rear coming out. If you go 100% straight away, it's literally gonna go bam, 
you know, 35-35, 15-15, uh, I think it was, bam, the rear is going to get slightly twitchy, especially if you start turning in as well. Now, of course, that, that weight has now moved forward to 35-35, and as you start to roll off the brakes, that weight slowly moves back. Now, if you did 100% braking to zero, suddenly you're going from 35-35 back to 25-25, there could be issues there. As you saw with the Scandinavian flick, when you look at extremes, you then start to have problems with the weight shifting round and having problems you know, with turning. So if you went 100% to zero and then suddenly turn left, this tyre could suddenly end up, so let's go back to this, 25-25, you go 35-35, and this is 15-15, or in fact, let's just go extremes here, 50-50, 0, 0 the rear's not doing anything, there's no weight over the rear at all, bam, okay, now you're going to go back again to 25-25-25-25, but what will happen then is suddenly the rear's going, whoa, you're just giving me a load of weight, what can actually happen, as you saw with the momentum, is that that could go up to 30, that could go up to 30, that could be 2020, even though the car's 50 50, because you've suddenly gone, brake! Oh, I've lifted off, so all the weight goes up, uh, it goes back. Now, this is where I talk about micro movements in my live streams and stuff, because what will happen then is the weight will sort of pendulum and then it'll settle down again. So, you don't want to do that, you want to slowly come off the brakes to stop that pendulum effect uh, happening where we've gone 25 25 to 50 50 to then going back. So let's put this back to 25, 25, 25, 25. Let's say we go 100% braking, it's 50, 50, 0, 0. But then we start to trail brake. So we slowly go towards 50% uh, trail braking. Okay, so that is, again, is moving towards the front now. Technically, that would be 37, but we'll just call it 35, 35, uh, and we'll call this 15, 15. Okay, so now suddenly the rears are doing 15, 15, Fronts are doing 35, 35. That's not too bad. We're managing that. And say we trail brake for a few seconds doing this. That means then the weight isn't pendulum, penduluming? Whatever you want to call it. It's not transitioning backwards and forwards a lot. So then we go, okay, we're going to now start to release the brake that little bit more. It can go to 20, 20, uh, and that's 30, 30. And again, you see in here now that it's not as extreme with the weight transfer front to rear. So... Potentially now we start to turn in because it's a left-hand turn, for example. So we're trail braking now towards the corner. We, we talked about that in the braking episode where you start to trail brake towards the corner. Now what can happen then is we then have differing issues with uh, how the tyres work. So potentially, yes, we are braking, but the front left tyre is now only doing 25%. The front right is now doing 35% because if you turn left, obviously all the weight then goes that way. Uh, so watch the mouse move that way. Um, so more of it goes this side, and then this is doing that, and then this is doing that. And again, we're trying to stop this drastic transition of weight. So if you uh, start trail braking and you smoothen out that trail braking as you turn, you reduce that pendulum effect of the weight also going front to back, but also side to side. So you can start to go, okay, I'll reduce this. I'll reduce that movement slowly rather than going, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it's hard to explain, but that is what you're technically doing to try and avoid oversteer. If you smoothen out your inputs, the weight transition will be less in the braking zone. Therefore, the tires won't go to the extreme lengths of the momentum shifting and then the car oversteering. So do keep that in mind with braking. A lot to show in a spreadsheet as well as the footage. I understand that. Um, very hard to explain, but that is what you're trying to do. You're trying to smoothen out your inputs to reduce the extremes of the weight transfer. And again, go back to the start of the footage with the Scandinavian flick. If you can reduce the extremes, that is what you have. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at accelerating and again, how we can smoothen that out because again, this is all of this. So here we have the Porsche 911. Group 3 car, we're going to look at Group 3 now for this acceleration uh, section because Group 3 is the favoured category to be honest. So as you see the Porsche at the top end of the rev range, that's where you're going to be um, you know, for the maximum power. And we're also going to look at this from an MR and FR perspective. So in terms of MR, the Porsche, the engine is mid-engined. In fact, I think the weight distribution of the Porsche is particularly more over the wheels or more towards the rear than all the other cars. We don't actually see weight distribution in the game, 
but it is there. So we'll make a slight little bit of a mistake there, coming to the chicane. But we're going to do half a lap of Suzuka, basically. We're going to go all the way to the hairpin and show you the acceleration at the hairpin. But I wanted to demonstrate how the car handles during this section as I go on the throttle each and every time. So we're going to accelerate towards the first corner. And again, we're looking for little bits here where you can see the weight transition to the rear of the car. Remember, if more weight goes over the rear tyres, the tyre pushes down into the road. Effectively, you get a little bit more tyre on the road, a little bit more grip. We get a bit twitchy there, but nothing major. It's a quite a common area to get twitchy in these cars. So we're going to come through here. Again, being MR, it can handle these corners a little bit better than the other cars because it just sweeps itself round. And, uh, of course, we have just recently been here in the Audi R8 as well in the Group 3 car. So we are used to MR cars a little bit there. So accelerating out of here, as you can see, absolutely no problem. That weight over the rear wheels, we're planting it. We had to bounce the throttle a little bit there, but nothing major. Uh, coming into here, again, no issues with this throttle. We should have issues coming out of this corner in some cars. But again, look, MR straight on the throttle, plants the rear down. But here's the key corner. This is the corner we want to look at. As we come into here, first first gear, round we go, get on the throttle, look at that, straight out, absolutely no problem, no wheel spin, planted. That's a demonstration of weight, being a mid-engine rear-wheel drive car, the weight helping the rear of the car plant itself down and get out the corner. Now we have an FT1 Vigil Gran Turismo car, again we're revving towards the, you know, the end of the, uh, the rev counter here. And this is to demonstrate now how front engine rear wheel drive cars struggle a little bit more in this in this instance. Now if you imagine an FR car on a really fast corner accelerating out of it, it's easier because it's got downforce. The downforce pushes the car into the ground, it just gives it that little bit of grip. That's the whole point of high downforce cars on technical circuits. It pushes the car down, they get a bit more grip, then get around the corners, accelerate out. Um, but here we have the FT1, so we're going to do the exact same test here. Uh, as we accelerate out. This is turbocharged. Our turbocharge does have an impact as well because obviously you've got that turbo coming in as you change gear which gives you that little bit of oomph which potentially might just shove that weight a little bit more to the rear and help push the car down a little bit more than a non-turbocharged FR car. But coming to this first corner, again we're going to do the exact same test here that we just did in the 911. So coming out of here, you can just see the car get a little bit twitchy there, a little bit more twitchy than the 911. I'd say the cars will get twitchy there but uh, we just saw that a little bit more. Coming through here, absolutely no problem. We're balancing the throttle. Now, the reason we balance the throttle, and this is how you control the weight, is obviously to stop that pendulum effect. And we'll look at the spreadsheet in a little bit, just to demonstrate that a little bit more. Coming through here, curb knocks off a little bit, but you can just see the car on the throttle there. Even after the curb had finished, we're still on the power. There's still the rear is wanting to come out. We don't have as much weight on those rear tyres, and it's forcing the car to get a little bit slippy. Into the right-hander of Degna 2, accelerate out. Again, we can't accelerate as quick as the MR cars because we're having to bounce that throttle weight to make sure we're straight in order to put the power down. Now, here's the critical corner, the hairpin going round. Absolutely no problem. Look at that. It's twitchy a little bit. Still twitchy, still twitchy on the exit there. You saw the little bit of twitching. Uh, once we've got straight, it calmed itself down a bit, and as you increase that, at uh, speed, you then obviously plant the rear down more because downforce starts to take effect. Now we have the Aston Martin Vantage uh, GT3 car, Group 3 car. Again, FR, but this time it's non-turbocharged. So obviously we don't have that turbo kicking in like we did with the FT1, which does help it to some extent as you get towards the end of the rev range. So in the FT1, for example, you potentially might want to be in a lower gear to get that turbo kick to really plant the rear. With the V12 Vantage, you want to be at the top end of the rev range. Now, one thing to note, I said this in the uh, balance performance test as well, and you see that in the spreadsheet. FR cars, you tend to short shift um, to try and avoid um, issues with the rear spinning up. As you can see already, out that, sh out that chicane, already we're having issues with getting on the power. Um, with other cars like MR, you want to be at the top of the rev range, really plant that rear down and get out the corner as, as fast as you can because there's that much more grip there. So again, we're coming into this first corner. Absolutely no issues. Again, we're going to have this little twitch here as we come on the power. Again, you know, a little bit of twitch there. We handle it fairly okay. We're near the top of the rev range in this non-turbo car, so it doesn't affect it as much as if we were a bit lower. But sometimes you want to be in that lower rev range because you don't want the full power to hit the rear wheels. So that's the difference. Uh, again, I'll explain this with the spreadsheet example in a second. Going through here, this time absolutely no problems. We bounce the throttle, we get to the top of that rev range. We're at the speed where the car can handle it. Downforce is taking effect there as well, um, so it does help the car. So into Degna 1 and 2. Way just a bit twitchy there. Managed to catch that, no problem. Using the techniques as discussed in the first driving school as we head towards the hairpin, the critical hairpin now. 
as we now come into here first gear now watch this car now watch it again we get wheel spin still wheel spin and then we get onto it because we're at low speed downforce doesn't take impact we've got no weight over the rear wheels the car struggles to get that power down so you will quite often see mr cars dominating low speed corners versus fr cars on the acceleration point especially in group three because they can just put most of the weight on those rear wheels and get out the corner right spreadsheet time so here we have an MR car. This is just a random MR car. Not exact weight distributions, but we're saying 40% of the weight is over the front. 60% is over the rear. Obviously that adds up to 100. Do you want to double check that? There you go. Bottom right hand side, 100%. So, obviously, if this is the situation of an MR car and you accelerate, the weight is going to start here and move down. So technically... It could go 40, 40, 10, 10. What the tyres have in terms of weight distribution. Imagine a dragster, it goes on two wheels. It's the exact same principle. All the weight goes to the rear. That's why they also have really big tyres on dragsters. Because that gives you the most grip possible. Weight and tyres into the floor. More tyre on the floor. Means that it can handle the power better. Can accelerate forward. So, bang. There we go. Goes back 40 uh, to, well, 80 to 20%. Now, if that was the opposite way around, and it was like this, again, 100%, this is an FR car, and the weight goes that way, potentially that goes down to 20, that goes down to 30. Now, for that is essentially what the MR cars were originally, so they lose out on the additional 20% weight that goes over the rear wheels, to so they have less push going into the rear of the car, which means the tyres don't get pushed into the ground as much, because there's not as much weight there, and therefore, they can't accelerate out as quick. That is the basic format of accelerating. Now, of course, uh, we also have the issues that we mentioned earlier of the pendulum effect. So you saw the 911 got a bit twitchy out the first corner. The FT1 did, and so did the Aston Martin. Because, of course, accelerating like this and the weight going towards the rear, but also while turning, you've also got the pendulum effect. So again, these values can change, of course, because as you turn, more weight is distributed accordingly to what is happening. So if you're turning left, more rate, more rate, weight goes towards the right. So literally, you have center point, you turn left, weight goes that way. It's just, it's just what happens. So in theory, this is the FR car accelerating now. If we now are going around the left hand corner, this then potentially drops down to 10. That potentially goes up to 30, that potentially goes down to 20, and that goes to 40. Now, fingers crossed, that adds up to 100. There we go. So the rear right now is doing 40%. Uh, it's got 40% of the weight. That's got 30%. So obviously this tyre will wear more. And again, we'll talk about tyre wear in a different episode. But that is why different tyres wear at different rates, depending on the circuit and the car, etc. But in this situation, of course... If the rear right gets overloaded, you're going to get wheel spin. You're going to have issues with the car just being overloaded on that suspension and have issues. But again, remember, it's a pendulum effect. So you try and balance that pendulum effect out. So how do you do that with accelerating? Well, if you've got a real life car, if you've ever done a circuit experience, gone on a track day, done anything, uh, racing drivers will always say you have to balance the throttle. So as you head towards the apex, you're trail braking in. So, of course, the weight is going forward. So imagine this is the centre of the car. The weight is now going that way. Okay. So as you then release the brake. So let's say that's that's 100%. That's 50%. That's 25%. We're, down, we're now here. Now as you release the brake. The weight moves back. Now if you do this smoothly. It'll just move back. It won't pendulum. It won't go way, 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 way. Like that. It won't do that. Now if you start to accelerate. Slowly. So you bounce the throttle first. So go like 10, 20%. You're not really moving the weight that much. You know. You've just come off here. And you're just doing that. Very simple. If you go to 100, straight away you're going, do, 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 bang. Instantly, you're going to overload the car. But if you start to bounce it, the, the weight transition smoothens out. So you go, okay, I'm going to bounce the throttle. And then I'm going to slowly accelerate. Now, in Gran Turismo, it's a little difficult. And we touched on this in the accelerating episode. It's, it's not a linear throttle. So, you know, the last little bit can get tricky. And that's what some people suffer with. Um, but again, this is that whole weight distribution. So trying to be smooth with the braking and accelerating, make sure you're doing something and it will stop that pendulum effect. Um, literally just smooth acceleration will do that rather than 100% braking, 
hundred percent accelerated. I mean, like, I mean, even that, you know, even just demonstrating that, it just goes all over the place. Because if you do that, and then just release it, it's going to go back that way, and then go back that way, and then settle. So it's the same with accelerating. That's why if you see people dabbing the accelerator, so doing that, so they go hundred zero hundred zero. What will happen is you'll see the weight start moving and the car wanting to oversteer. Sometimes you want that little bit of oversteer, uh, but most of the time you don't. So that's why you say be smooth on the throttle. When you get on the throttle, you don't want to then take your foot off it because it will cause issues. Uh, so do keep that in mind. So that's how you sort of smoothen out the weight transfer to the rear of the car. And what happens with the weight transfer when it's over the rear of the car with accelerating? That's why MR cars are better than FR cars in that scenario. So let's now have a quick look at uh, what happens when turning. We have touched on this already. Uh, we'll do it in an N100 car. Um, and then literally, we'll sh I'll show you the ch entire picture. Um, really, it's all about how you manage this. I can only demonstrate what it is and the principles of it. Um, it's then about how you manage it. So uh, yeah, let's have a look at that example now. So here we are, have the Alpine A110. It's the old one, it's the N100 car. Now I've always said the N100s are the best to demonstrate weight transfer because they've got the softest suspension in the game and you can quite quickly see where the weight is moving and what it's doing. So down the straight, we're just going to go left and right, a bit like the Scandinavian flip we did earlier on. But then we're going to straighten up the wheel. So here we go, left, right, I straighten up. But notice the car is still settling itself back to the center. After I straighten up, there's still movement there. That's the pendulum effect I wanted to demonstrate. And what happens whenever weight moves in the car, that is happening. It's still trying to sort itself out, irrespective of what you do. Now coming to this first turn as well, Obviously we're coming into here and then we hit the curb and we get a bit airborne. Now the issue here is because we get airborne, the tyre gets overloaded. So it already has a lot on the right side. The, car, the weight of the car is on the right side of the car. As we hit the curb and it bounces, it transitions more of that over. And it, any part of the car only has a limit. You know, there's no unlimited factor. You can't put a billion tons of weight onto one side of the car without something happening. So in that situation, it gets overloaded with weight. There's too much going on in the car and then it, it breaks traction. So I wanted to demonstrate that because that is an issue. Now, in terms of turning, I've demonstrated the pendulum effect. But if you do left, straight, left, as we do here, left, straight and left again, notice how now the car gets a bit oversteery and we lose control. Again, an issue here is if you're not smooth with inputs, like braking, like accelerating, and it's the same with turning, you're going to have issues because you turn left, the weight goes to the right. You straighten up, the weight moves back to the middle. You then chuck it left again, we've got a big pendulum effect happening where then more of the weight is transferred over, think of the Scandinavian flick, and then the car breaks. So we're going to leave that there in terms of the Alpine A110. Um, just to clarify here, it's very hard to demonstrate weight transfer. But the three things that you have to make sure you do is be smooth with your inputs. So, you know, that's trail braking, ex uh, you know, accelerating, smooth transitions with those inputs, um, steering as well. If you're smooth with all three of those things, so accelerating, braking and turning, you will reduce extreme weight transfer. Weight transfer will always be there. Irrespective of what you do, it will always be there. But if you can be smooth with it, you can manage it, understand it, and actually in some cases, as I say, use it to your advantage, like we showed at the start of the video with the Scandinavian flick. As I say, I hope you enjoyed this driving school. Very hard to demonstrate weight and very hard to explain weight. That's why I had to use a spreadsheet a lot and try and demonstrate percentages. Um, if there are other ways to explain this, make sure you put them in the comments. If you've got any questions about this, make sure you put them in the comments. Uh, sorry for the delay with this one as well. Obviously, we had the Christmas break as well. Um, but yes, the next episode is going to be uh, understeer, oversteer and catching a car, uh, which again involves weight transfer. You know, we build up on these episodes. Accelerating, braking and cornering have impacted this episode and this then also impacts on the next one. But uh, that's it for me for now. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you next time.